Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. A treat especial from the country. What brought you such hits as filleting the flesh of a young calf and frying it in its own rendered mother's milk. As well as uh, another favorite of mine, allowing young buxom ladies in ponytails to cavort freely smoking cigarettes on their bicycles throughout town without the need for the nanny state to intervene and force them into a styrofoam brain bucket. The idea is gruesome in the extreme. Uh, the results in both cases, sublime. At Proxon Tool. Despite rumors to the contrary of having sprung hail and sound straight from an egg in the form you see before you, that is disembodied hands, I indeed was a lad at one point who had access, as such, had access to a Whitlin implement. What for? Whitlin, all sorts of pointed sticks and uh, death, <laughs> death to frog implements. I uh, am ashamed of very few things in my life, but having nearly decimated uh, uh, an entire ecosystem of frogs, I do have a heavy burden. However, onwards and outwards, this is the natural progression to that, being a world famous duck carver and there is no better way to start a new hobby than to buy a tool a power tool for said hobby don't judge me we've all done it this here is a device what makes wood shavings beautiful blow molded case non-textured it's harder to get a nice looking case when it's non-textured it's impossible to hide flaws if you don't have the texture. And we have some shakhit. That's a mouthful. Seconded only by <laughs> that Western European throat disease. Where is the American? Son of a diddly. No American on here. Useless. Oh, here we have the tool. Boring. We'll set that aside for now. Look at this. Bunch of living hinges here plastic uh, living hinges on this ABS blow molded plastic and then secondary process to insert this. Unfortunately, it doesn't come out, but have a gander, wow. All hand finished. And these apparently, well, they're made in the EU, but I think they're actually made in Germany, which it, having a, well, here I got a, a cheap, this is the cheapest. What is it? Tongue full. Oh, that's disgusting. Dremel off uh, the Big Rock Candy Mountain Mouse Poundland and doesn't feel nearly as rigid in the hand. This actually has an aluminium casement on it. Feels real good. Stiff. Oh, no. My mistake. Not so stiff. Back to the important stuff. You can tell a lot about something by the care that went into the box. And as we see here, they did... <laughs> They did break all these flashing edges by hand, cut all that. Unfortunately, they couldn't get the, uh, it's, it's pretty close, but they couldn't quite get it in there square. Obviously, somebody doing a hundred of these at a time by, by eye. And uh, maybe this was getting towards a, a mandated European coffee break. Because, yeah, right off in the rhubarb. Nice touch here though. Who does that? Non-slip. Uh, looks like nitrile rubber just bonded on there. Yeah, just glued on. Well glued. Oh no. Oh wow. It's actually a proper grommet. Very nice. Like who, seriously, who does that? Who does that? Nice touch. Added expense and a very nice touch so it doesn't slip around on your workbench. Before we turn it on, we got to look at the meter. Here we got the dingus and what for poking in the uh, pixie receptacle in yonder wall. Unfortunately, the docking station is not the same. This is 220 volts and I'm not entirely sure that they're... I'm not completely familiar with them, but this one has a bit of a twist to the left here. And I don't know if that's supposed to be like that, but it does have all the accreditations and some sort of foreign language on here. The conductors in millimeters, Patelec C E M V D horn horn E F. I, yeah, it seems good enough for uh, <laughs> your mother's hacienda or your wife's sewing room. 
this is of course you know it's a hobby it's a hobby tool you're not going to be using this outside in the rain or anything or put on this this hanging bit here bit of a bit of a cluster happening there had a hard time getting the needed to put some hair around that hole apparently we are going to get into the meat of her here and see what the conjunction is in this malfunction that's making that rattle trap look at this <laughs> like it's barely even in there that could have been well let's tighten them up and see if that's the if that's the problem some limp-wristed European put that together yeah <laughs> that's the problem <laughs> don't quote me on this but men's hand strength well 25 year old men on average uh, over their contemporaries say 20 years ago are dropping 30 percent of their hand strength of course that's well we all know what that is we won't get into it but it's also <laughs> because of people not using their opposable thumb what God gave them <laughs> for for fun and profit so big long screws longer the screw the more the flexion but at least it's threading into not into plastic but there's actually machine screws uh, machine threads on there and it's threading right into the uh, die cast aluminum housing we're in like sin nice case here pretty stiff doesn't have any markings on it but it's definitely nylon glass fiber reinforced and the over molding is nice it's quite rigid itself it's not a super soft little rubbery thing I feel I, I like it nice details in order to keep that from delamming there that that is oh there we go yeah yeah sorry missed that uh, PA6 glass fiber reinforced 30 percent that's a nice part proxon branded motor 99 percent come on they didn't make this in germany they bought it off the shelf and stuck a stuck a stamp on it some nice features on this rolled body uh, flat plate rolled and formed body motor they've added some some gusseting here I mean, more iron is more better the the brush holders are big polyamid appear to be but well this isn't a real heavy duty tool so we can't get on them on that normally they're inside they're real small brushes but these are quite large nice feature here is they've added some mitigation for noise for commutation noise they've added capacitors right in there and also well epoxy down here where it breaks at the com bars centered powder uh, centered metal oil like bushings not bearings but bushings yeah you see that a lot in smaller motors centered powdered metal gear here for the input pinion and the matching part on this plastique so that matches in there and then this turns some sort of magical mechanism and the ratio is quite unless i fucked it i don't see how it could okay either it's slipping or the ratio is super high uh, must be slipping okay we'll get that apart see what I did okay I got the Jesus clip out Let's see if this pulls or pushes hmm hmm ah tappy tap tap no the mechanisms for converting rotational to reciprocating are generally fascinating to me so I really want to get in here but I don't want to destroy it yeah, well just gingerly pry here see if you know you got to take it one piece at a time essentially and hope for the beast I got a yeah not a super skookum housing it's not exactly a big but yeah it's not what it's made for anyway but what are you going to do you got to get in there it's it's I have no choice it's a compulsion I need to get in there there we go okay haha <laughs> not so tough now interesting interesting there's a bronze that's a bronze nut face spanner we'll have to pound that around and try and loosen that off and see what comes out this is being a see you next Tuesday we'll build 
they as we can see here there's some sort of adhesive maybe loctite maybe super glue in there to keep that ring from backing out so to get that to release we need to bring this up to temperature what temperature I'm thinking maybe 250 Fahrenheit maybe 300 we'll see I don't want to ruin the part of course so we got to be careful coming from that heat and beat school careful really isn't my forte but we'll give her some pulse width modulated torch action now we're just seeing the barest wisp of German smoke that means we got it plenty hot enough that's well over 250 degrees Frankenstein we'll let that chooch the heat will sink in hopefully release that adhesive oh it worked it's working now that is hotter than a 10 peck of billy goat so we got to be careful not to burn ourselves aluminium heat transfer coefficient being what it is you know what let's do something smart for once put on some safety gloves well bound up now Jesus just doesn't end well you get the proper tool what for doing a job you gotta make the proper tool what for doing a job the Empire she's a demanding mistress <laughs> what she gives with one hand she takes away with the other on the whole though I think preparation H is gonna be pretty good What do you think? I think that'll do. Oh yeah, snap fit with the icrometer even. I don't want to get cocky here, but it would appear those remedial machining lessons are really paying off. Eh? Oh fucker. Yeah, chowdering that right up. Apparently tool steel is good at cutting bronze. We'll always have heat and beat. Oh my god. Not so tough now. Look at that. Proof. Never give up on your dreams, kids. Unless they're too difficult, in which case go smoke a joint and play some video games. Fuck me. This is pretty neat here. Spring loaded. A little plunger action. Ball bearing and UHMW appears to be UHMW. Could be polyethylene because it's kind of clear as well just to retain that ball bearing in there so that choo -choo, that's that's the stroke on her well actually no this this assembly will not come apart because it's been injection molded right onto the shaft that's the stroke of her gonna be about three millimeters will not come apart cheap just cheap bearings no name bearings big for the size of it for what this does that is a very robust thrust bearing and then just for axial loading as well they've added a um, of course bearings need to be they need to be in pairs you can't just have one bearing running the show because there's nothing to uh, to stiffify the shaft so this is that second bearing deep groove ball bearing and that is the entire mechanism what takes rotary motion and converts it <laughs> into linear back and forth 
So all that work and now we see what's in there. Non, nothing serviceable in there at all because this has been injection molded over. You know, low torque application. But if you did stall this, if you did happen to stall this, this would be the first thing to shear right off. Okay, pretty neat. Nice, uh, nice gear casing. You know, I gave this thing a hot supper and to her credit, she didn't break and uh, <laughs> did not give up the goods easily either. So well assembled, you know, chintzy bearings, kind of a chintzy setup here with this injection molded, but overall not tea bag for, you know, for a little play toy, essentially. We're going to put this back together. We've successfully channeled our inner millwright in order to change the grease out and completely dicker every single nut and fastener on the thing. <laughs> there we go. Now the cord assembly, it just snaps right in for quick assembly. And that is why it's weeble wobbling around. There's nothing positive there other than a couple of plastic tabs in the body keeping it together. Bit of a fuck around here. We ain't got 220 volts. And we definitely don't have that kind of pixie receptacle so dredging up while you hear the jingle jangle of chains that is the ghost of teardowns past recall this has a rectum fryer that means the motor is dc now that rectum fryer is uh, 600 volts also that's probably good that they have the capacitors in there for uh, spike mitigation because 220 volts is root mean square so peak voltage is something like 325 volts that rectifier from the data sheet is a 600 volt rectifier, one and a half amps max. So those capacities are, are those capacitors are in there not just to mitigate noise going back into the grid, but also to lengthen the longer uh, the, the <laughs> lengthen the longer of time that that rectum fryer will last in here, because it's not subject to all these nasty commutation spikes. Okay, we got the dingus and converted over to beginner voltage, Norte America voltage. Contact, here's red hot shrapnel in your eye. No. <laughs> and you flashbacks, you do not want to wake up to that coming from your wife's side of the bed. <laughs> that is a mistake you don't make twice. I spent a week picking wood chips out of my teeth. Uh, here's a V-groove bit. And we'll put that in. We'll give that a try. I think that's the way it goes. Yeah, it seems to work. Tighten that up. It's nice that the, you don't need the collet wrench for this. It, it does come with something. This, I have no idea what it does. No clue. It doesn't fit on anywhere. I don't know. It powdered big chunk of powdered metal there but pfft, no clue no clue what that is supposed to do i don't think it's supposed to do anything let's give her a try here engage your safety squints On our sacrificial aluminium, here our rocket surgery iconography, the rocket ship about to take off. <laughs> that didn't work too bad. Now <laughs> we'll we'll give her a try with a, a lesser material. Well, even at 120 volts, which is half the voltage, so this is the motor spinning half as fast as it should. So we'll only have 5,000. It makes the cuts easier. No tear out at all because you're not forcing anything. This would probably be pretty good. I'm talking out of school here, but this would be good for those lino type uh, presses. Well, there's no biax scraper, but you get the idea. It's, I like this. Actually, I wish you could buy this in North America. I wish it was 120 volts. Aluminum housing, aluminum gear housing. You don't see that on small little hand tools. It is essentially for what it does, it's overbuilt. And 
you pay for that. These things, these tools are expensive, but it's nice to be able to have alternatives to this super, super shitty chasing that dollar right down the drain tools that we see nowadays. This, yeah, this gives me hope for humanity. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice.